So now, in this video, we're going to look, I actually put together a couple of circuit fragments that I've been uh, looking at uh, recently. And um, some people may see this sooner than other people. So, we have a 5 series red LEDs here. That's our load that we want to light. So, we need a minimum of at least 10 volts. Absolute minimum. And, because uh, they drop about 2 volts each. And then, now. Uh, after that, the rest of the voltage goes across the resistor. So I decided to use a 150 ohm resistor and uh, 12 volts worked all right across that. With just a direct 12 volts across it, we got about 13.3 milliamps as I covered in a couple other videos. And um, so we had the problem though, if I bumped it up to 13 volts, the supply voltage just across this load here, then we hit the 20 milliamps uh, max that the LEDs uh, could pass. So we didn't have any wiggle room with that 12 volts. As we increased uh, voltage a little bit, current increased rapidly. So we're going to get uh, less current through the LEDs in this particular circuit here, but not a lot less. The LEDs are uh, bright enough. As you can see, there. I had the lamp at the brightest setting, not a super bright lamp, you know, um, and I can adjust it to get a little more light on there. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see these are lit up with uh, no problem. We have plenty. I think maybe there's like 8 milliamps right now. Um, but in uh, any case, it's close to 10, so approximate 10. Now, we uh, accomplish this by wiring an NPN bipolar junction transistor as an emitter follower. So I have a 12 volt Zener diode right there. So as I raise the supply voltage, the uh, voltage across uh, the Zener diode will not exceed uh, 12 volts. So it will pass current as needed to keep the voltage limited. And then that transfers over to the base of an NPN bipolar junction transistor middle pin. It's facing to the right though. So it's the bottom pin there, emitter. Um, or the base is the middle pin, I mean, right there where the jumper is. Emitter is down below it. It's on the left though if you're looking at the flat side. And then collector is at top, uh, right there. Um, it's on the right though if you're looking at it from the front. Now, what this does is if you give a voltage to the base, you're going to get approximately 0.6 volts less over here. So if we did have 12 volts there, it would be about 11.4 volts over there. As I said before, the LEDs are dropping about 10 volts. So you get the rest of the voltage across here. So 11.4 subtract 10 would be 1.4. That's about 1.5 volts approximately. Divided by the 150 ohm resistor would give us 10 milliamps of current. So we're in that range. But unfortunately, uh, the voltages aren't going to build up as much as we would expect ideally. Um, so, you know, there's always the ideal and then there's the real world uh, situation. Things don't work out ideally, but ideal works really well for the formulas. So ideal is going to get you in the range of what reality is actually going to provide. So we do need to get a current flowing through the Zener diode to build up its Zener uh, voltage. And that's where it's going to kind of stay. It does shift a bit uh, with how much current flows through it. Um, and you do need a fair amount of current going through before it will actually hit 12 volts. So at this lower voltage, it's going to be a little more uh, pathetic. We're not going to get the full voltage across there. But as you can see, with 12 volts, we have the LED uh, lit pretty well. The current that actually goes through the LEDs, I mean, just a little trickle goes through. Um, the vast majority, practically all of it, is coming from the supply. So the transistor, when you wire this up, it uh, sets the voltage there by providing however much current it needs to to build up that verge, uh, voltage there. And, uh, you know, restricts current as needed to prevent the voltage here from going higher than 0.6 volts less than what you set there. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll uh, move the power supply over. And uh, so remember, this is not all LED current. It's practically all LED current now. And this isn't as accurate as a multimeter. We could uh, measure the current with the multimeter. But you can see the LEDs did not get brighter. Current uh, went way up though. A lot of the current is flowing through the Zener diode right there. And um, so we're still well below 20 milliamps going through the LEDs. I even set my limit uh, right there. And uh, we just kind of broke that, but just barely right there. And um, so we probably, you know, no more than about 10 milliamps of current going through the LEDs. So probably about 10 milliamps of current going through the Zener down from our calculations. Of course, it's always good to uh, measure that stuff for practice. 
Um, but there you can see I rapidly dropped the voltage. LEDs are practically the same brightness right there. So we know we got about the same amount of current going through them. Now uh, I rambled on long enough, let's grab the multimeter. So now I got the uh, multimeter here. I'm gonna set it to measure voltage. If there's numbers for the voltage, you set it to a number voltage higher than what you can expect to measure. I don't have to move the red probe for anything but high current, so more than about half of an amp, which uh, we're not gonna be dealing with in this video here. So uh, we can zoom in a little bit there and keep everything in view. Now we uh, can look at the supply voltage. Should be 12 volts across here, whether we go to that point or that point, although it might uh, shift a little bit you know, based on how much resistance is along the path um, right there. But it looks like it's holding steady along all of them. So again, we had that uh, 12 volts, and uh, so we're gonna lose some voltage. Uh, so we got 11.21 volts. I estimated about 11.4. Uh, so we're actually doing um, pretty well as expected for this circuit, even at this low voltage. I'm surprised we're doing that good there. And um, hopefully we got uh, 12 volts at uh, this point there so you know uh, yeah that's pretty much what the supply voltage was remember that so enough current is trickling through if I remove the uh, resistor we don't want to remove that zener diode at any time we want to make sure that this point never exceeds uh, 12 volts um, but yeah we can remove that resistor that cuts off current turns off the transistor so we need a trickle of current so it looks like we're doing uh, really well at this point and um, so we uh, should have uh, we measure that 12 volts so yeah, it's holding across the Zener diode. Now, the Zener diode is not setting the voltage because that's all there is. It's just preventing current from going through it. So now let's jump up to uh, 20 volts really quick and um, go to a 20. So now, first thing we can do, we can see, let's check the uh, voltage across the load. Just to make sure we're still, you know, no more than about 12 volts across the load. And there you can see, you know, it's slightly higher, but hardly any bit higher. That's across the entire load. And we could calculate how much uh, current's going through this by the voltage across there. So we have two volts across the resistor. That's kind of interesting right there. So the uh, LEDs, um, yeah, 10 and two. Yeah, that makes sense because it's uh, 12 volts right there. And um, so 11.5, I was thinking it'd be closer to uh, 1.5 volts across it for some reason now let's go uh, up here and you can see we got about 12.63 volts there we go so that that is getting 12 volts across the load that's right that's what I thought before so the Zener diode when you get higher current going through it so this is not a surprise I just uh, didn't think ahead about this it's not a surprise when you get you know quite a bit of current going through a Zener diode it actually builds up a little bit higher Zener voltage but still we're working with 20 volts here and the Zener voltage is setting just a little bit more than 12 or it's pretty much exactly 12 and a half volts right there so slightly more than before and when we had lower uh, voltage it uh, was slightly below 12 volts remember but the supply voltage was also uh, slightly lower so we can see how much current is going through this resistor uh, right here by the voltage across it so it has 7.38 volts across it. it's a 1000 ohm resistor to let a lot of current uh, flow through. So we should have 7.4 uh, basically milliamps of current flowing through it. So again, I can remove the resistor, but not the uh, Zener diode. So now we're gonna set the meter to measure milliamps of current. And uh, we're well below about 500 milliamps of current. Um, so I can just sell it, set it to the milliamp range. And um, it's not uh, more than I think 600 milliamps that you can measure. So yeah, now we can see how much current is actually flowing through the resistor when it is uh, connected to the circuit. And as I said before, we calculated about 7.4 milliamps of current. And interestingly enough, looks like it's uh, going down as things uh, warm up. I, I would have thought it would go the other way. Um, but in any case, um, well, maybe the Zener diode is building up more uh, uh, voltage so less currents flowing through now uh, so I'll put it back so that was practically all the current going through the Zener diode so we could have calculated the wattage 12.5 uh, volts times 7 it was like 0.5 uh, milliamps of current and now we can uh, measure how much uh, I think it'll be easier to see if I do this so I'll put that side of the resistor back to the emitter 
there. Uh, we're not touching the LEDs though. So first I'm gonna slide this up. I'm touching the line lead, the anode of the top LED. Remember, you gotta put LEDs in the right direction or they will not uh, light up. And um, so I missed, oh, I'm not on that row with the LEDs. No, no, I have a gap. I should have a gap. That's right. So uh, if uh, this drags on too long, maybe the wire wasn't uh, touching or something. So now let's see if we can do this. Get to the long lead. There we go. So yeah, we got about 12 milliamps of current going through there. And uh, there, now you can see currents going up as things warm up. So that's going to happen, but it should uh, level off. And as I saw before in an earlier video, when I had 12 volts across the load, um, which we measured uh, earlier, when we have this higher voltage, 12 volts should have gave us 13.3 milliamps of current. So it's going to rise up a bit, but then it's going to settle off at uh, some point. So that's why I put approximately 10 milliamps of current right there, because it's going to actually vary quite a bit. These are not precision components. Things drift a little bit as they get warmer, as more current's going through them, or as they're fighting a higher voltage. That's basically what the transistor is doing. More current's going through the Zener diode, it's going to affect the Zener uh, voltage a bit. And um, as the transistor warms up, because it's fighting more voltage, and or more current is going through it, but in this case it's mostly that it's fighting more voltage, then it's going to start uh, conducting better. So. Those are things to be aware of, uh, but uh, we accomplished our goal where I can keep these LEDs safely lit somewhere around 10 milliamps of current over a wide range of voltages. So I think that's why I made that first circuit to begin with, uh, 12 volts across these LEDs, was because I got lithium iron phosphate batteries and their minimum voltage is actually 12 volts but that's also their nominal voltage, um, or not their nominal voltage, but usually you refer to them as 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're usually actually uh, 20 or 12.8 volts at most times, you know, if they're halfway charged, but there's a long time that it's hovering in that area, about 12.8 volts. And uh, you should stop using them at 12 volts. And uh, they're, they're considered fully dead at 10 volts if they are, uh, you know, lithium iron uh, phosphate uh, batteries, uh, the 12 volt version. You don't want to go below 10 volts. And you can go up uh, to 13.6 when they are fully charged. Now, that's what they are when they're fully charged. When you apply a charger to them, many chargers raise their voltage to 14.6 volts while they're charging. That just packs more energy into them than if you stopped at 13.6 as soon as you remove the charger so it, it doesn't really accept any charge anymore the charger recognizes that charger turns off and uh, the battery quickly goes right to 13.6 the uh, charger might float it it might keep it at 13.6 as well um, so we're not going to go into that details anymore but that was the motivation for me making this circuit where a whole wide range of uh, voltages being applied to the uh, circuit will keep you know about 12 volts across the load that's my motivation because this circuit cannot handle 13 uh, volts that gives the 20 milliamps which is the absolute minimum for them so we're protecting them from a higher voltage with the NPN bipolar junction transistor wired as an emitter follower it's voltage set by a Zener diode but you don't get the Zener voltage you get a little bit less but as we saw here it worked out great at higher voltages we actually got about 0.6 volts higher than the rated uh, value on there these are my cheap zener uh, diodes um, from a kit i got from china just a whole bunch of them for a low price higher quality ones uh, might be closer to like 12 volts but uh, 5.1 volt zener diodes are uh, considered the best at holding their zener voltage as you drift farther and farther away from 5.1 volts they tend to drift more as the current changes so thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.